Hmm. Sonos. They're a brand that I should hate. I should hate them. Pretty much, they're the answer to everyone's question. Oh, I need to do a room with a Sonos. But a Sonos Play Bar, Sonos, Sonos, Sonos. So this is the first Sonos piece of equipment that I've had to play with. It's the Connect Amp, which is box, speaker terminals, line in, subwoofer out, you got networking ports, and then you got power. And I don't hate it. I don't. I really, in fact, like it. It's a little pricey. This unit is $500. 500 that's... It's that many. Forget the hardware for a second. Forget hardware. Let's go in the other room. Let's talk about software. Because whenever you talk about Sonos, you have to understand what you're getting into. You're getting into their app. Turn. You're getting into their app, and you're getting into their program. I don't call that an app. That's a program. That's an app. And frankly, it works, it works. It's not the greatest piece of software ever written. It feels a little iTunes-y, and I hate iTunes. But it works, you get through the options. You, here's how it works, here's how the setup went with that unit. Take unit, plug in with a network cable to my router, install this software, tell it to find the device. It found the device, you set it up in here to do Wi-Fi, you tell it your password. Then you could disconnect the wire and you never have to plug it in again. As long as it's within Wi-Fi range, it'll work. You could set it to full lossless. So it just takes the file and sends it there. You tell it what folders you want. I didn't give it my entire FLAC library because it was taking a while to take like a big folder. So I said, screw it, 1200 songs is enough. I listed some songs. You could install different services. Uh, Spotify and Sirius are the ones that come with. You get some room settings, status lights, EQ, loudness control. Okay, date and time, advanced, uncompressed. There's your option right there for uncompressed or compressed. Obviously, you want uncompressed. You don't have, have a real slow network to need compressed files. And here's your software. Wallpaper in the description. Here's your software. And it's real basic. Here's your volume control. Here's your play, last, next track. You can choose shuffle, repeat. You can, I forget what that one is. What is that one? Crossfade. It has a very long crossfade feature. It's like 10 seconds of the end of a song and the 10 seconds of, and it just, and there's no options for that. It's just giant crossfade, which I kind of enjoy because I've had crossfades at like three seconds and they're like, meh. Again, you could do EQ right from there. And here's your choice. Let me go back in this panel because you've got three panels. Rooms, which I only have one item and people with money will fill their house with Sonos equipment. The Sonos speakers, skip them. Just skip those. If you can find a, a Connect Amp on sale, do it. Because at least then you get to pick your speaker. So I only have one room, one item, living room, and it's you can group multiple rooms together. Great. You want a house in the Hamptons, you can buy 10 of those things, put one in each room, plug it into the wall, everything's got Wi-Fi, you can group rooms, separate rooms, everyone's phone deals with different, here's your room, you can select a room right down here. Which room? I want this room, because it's the only room I have. Fine. So we select the room, now we select what's playing. Now playing, now this is the queue. The whole thing works based on the queue. How do you fill the queue? You can clear the queue, you can save the queue, you can pause all rooms, which is nice. Well, you go to the source on the right. You got Sonos Favorites, Music Library, Radio by TuneIn, Sirius, Spotify, Sonos Playlists, Line Ins, because that has a line in that you can access. And I think, and I can't test this, but I think you could take that line in, grab it, and put it in other rooms, and then you could add music services. So right now, Music Library, which is the files on my computer, which is the other room actually, but the files that I can access locally, and I've added, I can go here to see them, here, here they are, and start building a playlist or a queue, or I could just throw all the songs in there like I usually do, because why would you bother with individual things? And it works great. I could, right here from here, I could click that, it puts it up front, it starts playing it, it's playing in that room. As you could hear, let me pause that. Great. So now, okay, so, uh, Spotify integration. Here's the issue. On both the app and the program, Spotify is accessible only 
via their app. So I go to Spotify, you got five choices. You go to Spotify here, you get the same five choices. Uh, going through the day with some great music, which is just basically like the top recommended playlist, charts, new releases, genre and moods, and your music. If you go to your music here or here, it can access your saved Sonos, you have to obviously sign into Sonos, but it access your Sonos playlist, songs, and albums. But it's real hard to search, I don't even know if you can actually, I think you can search, you can search Sonos, Ugh, Spotify, through Sonos. But it's not as good as the actual Spotify app. In other words, you load up the Spotify app here or you have the Spotify on your computer, you don't, you can't send any of this to your Sonos. That was sort of like the, the, the uh, really? Because you could send it to a Google device, the device is available. I've got my bathroom, Google Chromecast in my bathroom, and a Google Chromecast on my receiver. And I could just Spotify to that. And it works great. Using the Spotify app or the Spotify program, I could do that just fine. But Sonos, you gotta deal with the Sonos app. So the Sonos apps works for what it's doing, it works amazingly, all right? You're able to pull up here, my playlist. I have one playlist I made on, Spot on Spotify. Here it is. I could double click one of those. It goes to the top of this queue and starts playing. Pause that, or I could just, I think I could add the whole thing at the top. You get all songs, they all go in. And then it'll mix and match. That's, that's one of the best parts. These are Sonos, these are Spotify songs. And these are hard drive songs. And they could all be mixed together and you could just shuffle through them. So on that fact alone, it's really good. Let's go back. Let's go back to what are our choices. I haven't played with Sirius XM. I have played with the line in. And then there's favorites. So I assume it's the same thing. You go to Sirius, you have all these choices. Party, and then you could hip hop party, rock and frat party, oldies party. If I double click that, what happens? It just connects, and now it's playing the kinks in the living room. So you notice how loud that gets? We're gonna get to we're gonna get to the volume and the actual physical hardware now, because I've pretty much given you the the rundown on the player. It's basic, shows you a thing. Let's see what else we got. Stations, you could change stations. Sleep timer, you could set alarms. By the way, best alarm clock ever. <coughs> Music library. Actually, where's my cue? Do I have my cue? Can I just get to my cue? I think I can just hit back. Back. Nope. And that's the FUBAR controller. Don't want that. I'll eventually get this. I've only been using it for like two weeks. Alright, so let's just say my music library. All my songs. I want to play all my songs. Play now. Play all my songs. Volume slider at the bottom. You can just jump ahead in the song there. There's no album art. Shows you everything you need. You get to pull down here to choose songs. You can go back, you hit that, you choose a different source. You can search your own library, which is nice. Does this slide? Sliding that way does that. Sliding this way does nothing. Sliding down shows you this again. Blah, 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 blah. Next track. So here, this, there you go. There's your cue, that thing. You hit that, here's all the songs that are in my cue, and it's a big, long ass list. I wonder if this will do anything. Volume. Now, the volume bar, I guess this is a good thing where you could press the end of the volume bar and it doesn't jump right to that point. It actually just goes up a little bit as you press up. So basically the volume up down buttons, which by the way also work on the physical buttons on your phone. Nope, that was sleep. Do go up and down. But you have to drag it if you want it to go up a lot. Yo, stretch, come on, man. Hit us with that exclusive. There you go. All right, that's Game Radio from Grand Theft Auto 3, by the way, which was an amazing station, along with Keja. Uh, hardware. There's a very good amplifier in this. These are some Burchardt uh, S200s, which are made in Sweden. And I think I'm the only one in the country with a pair of them right now, but we'll get to them. We'll get to those review because they have very unique stuff going on. And I put them here because frankly, what looks better than white speakers with a Sonos player? Nothing. That's gorgeous. And you'll look, and this has only got power plugged into it. And that, 
has sort of made me grow on the Sonos concept because it's playing lossless files with an amp powerful enough to push my 590 towers. These 590 towers, for a week, all they had on them was the Sonos amp. Just sitting here in the middle of the floor, towers, Sonos amp. And it pushed them to the point where police would come. So the power output of this is very, very clean. I, I mean, I've maxed it out many times, and it never sounds distorted. It never seems to struggle. It barely gets warm, and the best part is there's no power button. You get controls in the front of play and pause. You can lower that and pause it again. But there's no power button. There's no power switch. There's no power nothing. And it sits there using whatever it's using. I, I didn't actually hook my kilowatt up to it because it's in use right now. But I'm assuming it's going to be under 10 watts. Just sit there. And that is great because when you get up in the morning and you're like, oh, I got to go pee. But I want to do it to, you know, uh, basement jacks. This just starts playing in whatever room you're in. I don't want to play too much music on this particular copy. So, yes. Yeah, it's a heavy unit. It feels quality. All the plastics feel quality. That's metal. I believe that's metal. Might be a really nice polymer, but it feels like metal. It's a little warm, and that's it. So now the back of the unit, and I don't want to lay it, lay it on the buttons. It will accept bananas if you do what I did, where you shove them through the spring connectors, which is still easier than putting rubber wire in there. Again, the Ethernet plugs I only had to use to set it up. If you don't have, you don't have to use them, but if you can leave it in, it'll be probably more reliable than Wi-Fi. Although I have no issues, but then I'm going to go in five feet. Here are the linings. Let's test those for a second. Now, I'm not 100% sure. I tried to read through real quick to see if I could access it. To try to see if I could use any of the buttons here to switch to the line in. Because I'm in this room and I want now I want to use the line in. And I tried holding it, I tried pressing it, and it didn't work. But here in the, lim in the source selector, you have line in. Line in component living room, play now. So now it's playing my line in. And we could prove that by switching to my video player and playing some video of the rain down in Texas that my friend sent. He got, he got like 14 inches of water. MX player, by the way, best video player. Skip forward, skip back. That's playing. Playing just fine. Back, back. And now we want to switch off this and back to something else. Source, source. Actually, we just go to that. Hold on a second. Testing. Oh, we were ready. we still have the queue. The queue is still here. Aquafield basement jacks. Earth, I can fault nothing with the with the hardware. Oh, there's a subwoofer out too, and I'll actually it does take the frequencies out of these and throw them to a sub, and I only tested that. I tested it with a sub, but I don't have anything like right here, so I can do this instead fades and it comes back up with no low end not no low end but the low end it's sending to the base is not in the speakers anymore so it's a plug sensing subwoofer out does crossover it works it works don't buy the sonos speakers they're okay but they're overpriced something like this with the sort of power this is throwing is it worth 500 I, I I want it to be less. I want it to be like 300 and then I'd have no problem just saying absolutely. Absolutely. Because the only way you could match this is with multiple pieces of hardware. Google Chromecast or a Windows tablet running FUBAR and then you could run the FUBAR controller app and then you could hook any DAC and amp up to it and shove it all in a box and hide it away and it would probably cost you about $500 and you'd have a full tablet and an ODAC, and an SA60, or an SA98, or an SA... And it would all, it would do the same function, it just wouldn't have the software. The software is why you buy the Sonos. The ease of just next track, volume up and down. I kind of want to do the, uh, hold on. It's me. 
I was wondering oh, if that... These are great speakers, by the way. But, alright. Sonos doesn't... They're unique in the marketplace where they offer this. This only works with software. Most companies are terrible at writing software and they're getting better. I've heard they're getting better. I'm only using this revision and it works. As long as my computer's on, I could access all the hard drives in there and access all my music from my computer. If computer's not on, then you're stuck with Sirius and other things. Look at this. Take these ugly wires away. They're not even white. Apple Store would not approve. I find no fault in the hardware. It just sits here running all day, every day, and then just works. So if you're interested in Sonos, skip the play bar. Don't buy their stupid donut-shaped subwoofer. The little portable speakers, the little speakers, they're too expensive. At that point, just get a Bluetooth fucking speaker. All right? You can get a cheap one for $100, and it'll probably sound 90% as good. But it won't be part of the family, the Sonos family of things. I respect this. The Resonos Connect is just this without the amplifier built in. But the amplifier in this is good. To replace the amplifier in this on just the Sonos Connect, you would need, a, well, a decent amp. A very decent amp. I mean, this is not a T-amp where it distorts at the highest level. It's It's got warmth. It, it actually throws good sound. Almost to critical listening-like qualities. And I say that going almost because I didn't actually, I, I don't know how to actually test for that. Uh, it's won me over. If your budget allows, I'm okay with this. I wish it was, if they could find them on sale, it'd be so much better, but they want their $500, and if you need this connectivity, here it is. What else is there to say? My honest review. It's all you people want, and I have to give it. I could take this, unplug it, Walk into my bedroom, plug it back in, hook up another pair of speakers, and it'll just play. I can unplug it, walk into my bathroom, plug into my speaker, and it'll just play. Once it's on your Wi-Fi network, it's, it's here. It's made my life as a reviewer of speakers easier. I should own one. I could write this off as an expense, because I could just, oh, I got these speakers, plug it into my kitchen outlet. Hook speakers up, plays losslessly from my library, done. Convenience. Some people seem to like it.